I'll start by introducing myself. Sorry, I should have done that from the start. Uh, my name is Vika Rogers. Uh, I work for Cooperatives UK uh, and my role is specifically focused on developing the, the platform co-op sector. Uh, by this, we mean cooperatives that mainly operate through an online platform. Um, uh, my focus is mainly on two aspects, on de developing business support for platform co-ops and uh, exploring uh, potential funding uh, finance for uh, platform co-ops. Uh, there are quite a few colleagues of mine on this call as well, um, and they'll be in the breakout groups, so um, you can ask also further questions. Um, the work we do around platform co-ops at Cooperatives UK is done under the brand Unfound. Um, I'll, be, I'll paste the link in the, in the chat uh, where you can find more information about platform co-ops. Um, we've got some really great speakers with us today. Um, it's really great to have them all together. Um, and I hope you will find this uh, webinar useful. Um, I'm going to start by uh, passing it over to Adrian from uh, Co-op Cycle. Uh, he'll tell you more about the platform. Uh, but this is a really exciting project of an existing and running uh, platform co-op. So, Adrian, I'll pass it on to you. Thanks, Vika. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, so I'll try to make it uh, short because we have uh, uh, only a few minutes. Uh, some of you have probably heard about uh, Cobb Cycle, um, and it's mostly known for the software that we provide our members. Um, but just before that, because we're not a company that sells services, we are a federation, uh, I, was, I was just wanting to introduce a little bit the political idea behind Curve Cycle. So basically, so you know the, the story, uh, it was born in 2000, the idea was born in 2016 during the first um, core year strikes, we were like people working for delivery in France. And um, time at which some people, so it's a little bit original uh, for a co-op federation, uh, decided they wanted to create something to help the couriers. So it's not a federation that was born of the co-ops, the members. It was more a, a tool that was designed by volunteers who are still present and uh, who is now transmitted slowly but surely to its members, the co-ops. So 2017 was for the first year uh, people uh, could join like members and it was um, so actual co-ops and now we are about 30 and uh, more more incoming every day because we have a lot of um, people asking at the moment and um, yeah so the idea is to build uh, a common tool a shared resource uh, as we know we can do in the co-op uh, movement and the idea is to provide couriers uh, with uh, resources that will help them uh, take back the power over their work. Um, so it means uh, on the tech side, because uh, the companies like Uber Eats, Deliveroo and others, I don't know all of them all over the world, um, what, what they've done is they've created a lot of people working in that field, but uh, in, in terrible conditions. And, um, and the idea is to um, to give them the opportunity to um, build their own business as a co-op because we don't want to reproduce uh, the things that didn't work in other systems. Um, so obviously it implies the software that I'm going to show you in a minute uh, through uh, share, like I'll be sharing my screen. But the idea is to go further than this and to create a, really a, like a web network uh, between the co-ops of uh, all around the world uh, so that uh, they share experience, they share their know-how, they share their uh, knowledge. And uh, our role as a federation, it's only starting because we're very young, uh, will be to try and you know, see where are the needs and see where are the know-how so that we, when a group comes, uh, either from Delhi, from Mexico, from Manchester, uh, we can tell them, well, look, what we've known from the past experience in the last three years from members that are running and that are doing pretty, that are, that are doing fine, uh, we can give you uh, some tips on 
any issues that relates to a co-op, uh, a Korea co-op. So it can be the pricing, it can be the business model, it can be how you deal with schedules, uh, how you want to do, uh, how, what tools you want to do to uh, uh, help you with, uh, you know, project management, everything that's, that's like this. Uh, we want to try and uh, set up uh, a pretty dense launching kit so that co-ops have, like collectives have, uh, a lot of information to start off. Uh, but of course, the main reason why people knock on the door is the software. And uh, obviously, because when you want to get off, uh, when you want to get out of uh, Deliveroo or Uber Eats, uh, and if you want to do the same thing, which is not always the case, one, one thing you're missing is the technology. And it costs a lot to develop. So uh, one thing we created was this software. So for the story, the, the, and to go back to my first statement about uh, the co-op being created by volunteers and not co uh, members, uh, at first, the developer Max started to uh, develop uh, a food tech uh, part of the software, uh, which is pretty much what, we, what Deliveroo does or Uber Eats does. And the first members of the Federation said, uh, well, it's not, uh, it's not our use case. We don't want to do that. So, you know, it's volunteers trying to do something for members, but because they're not members, you know, it wasn't oriented uh, the, the, the right way. So uh, what I can show you first is what Max worked on at the beginning, uh, which was a dispatching tool. So it's something that exists. Uh, so I don't see. So it's something that exists um in a lot of different companies uh, but um i guess cup cycle is the only one doing it not as a service to be sold but just a mutualized resource so basically there's different kind of work in a courier co-op and one of them is trying to uh, set up uh, uh, deliveries so that you can manage and optimize your routes and so this is the first part of the delivery uh, of the software. It's this section that you should see. Um, it's uh, a dashboard on which you have a map. So this is the, the, the map of Grenoble in which, because uh, I'm a co-founder of Cyclo, it's a co-op in Grenoble. And um, on it, you see all the deliveries of the day. And uh, these ones were uh, the, the deliveries that were, that were made at lunch. Uh, it works pretty, it's pretty simple. It, you either have uh, clients, which are stores here, who can order from their back office that you, you create them an account and they get a, uh, like a back office access so that they can say, well, you need to collect this at this time, this day, here's a comment, here's the weight, everything. And you can save, you can set a pricing between in the, in the beginning so that it, uh, it automatically calculates for the client the price it's going to cost them. Um, and then once it's saved and you've accepted it, it arrives here in the unassigned uh, orders, deliveries. And what you have to do then as a dispatcher, which is one of the jobs usually in a courier co-op, is to assign then uh, uh, orders to uh, um, uh, a courier. So here you see Fredo and you see there's Stephen and Antonio and you just need to drag the orders like the deliveries to a courier. Another thing you can do, I'll, I'll go fast because we don't have a lot of time. I don't even know if I'm, I'm, I'm over time yet, uh, is you can download files so that you can, uh, if you have a client that's going to need you to deliver at many different addresses, I don't know, maybe uh, someone producing uh, organic soap. Uh, you go and you pick up 100 kilos, or maybe not 100 kilos, but 60 kilos of soap, and you did need to deliver it to 10 different stores in the city. You can up, uh, upload a, a sheet with the different addresses, and it automatically, if you complete it right, uh, it automatically brings uh, the different points on the city and then you have to do the same, assign the deliveries to the couriers. So this is the first, first part. Um, uh, because I'm sharing my screen, I don't see uh, if, um, questions, uh, Vika, if there are, so please uh, stop me if there are. And uh, the second part of the software is 
uh, something that in my knowledge does not exist uh, elsewhere. It's obviously the, the, the second part on what Max worked on, which is the food tech part. So the possibility uh, to put into relation um, restaurants, uh, clients, and Kekoye Co-op. So we use uh, uh, something called Stripe to divide payments, and it basically does what uh, the big platforms do. You have a certain amount of uh, restaurants. You can click here. And so what I show you is the example of Ciclo in Grenoble. You see all the restaurants here, and it works the same. You click and it tells you at what time you can order on the right somewhere. Should say something. Okay, so today, today between 7.25 and 7.35, and you can choose a menu, or you can choose, well, it works pretty much like it. Uh, what you need to know as well is this was, um, so the, the first thing on which Max worked before the members uh, said uh, you, we need uh, we need something else, and but the COVID crisis has made us work a little more on this part uh, lately because um, because uh, all the B the B two B activity sector that the co-ops had uh, pretty much turned to zero, so everyone went from B two B to a little bit of B two C, and what we are able to do now is also have stores. So here you see the stores. It's another instance, it's in Nantes, in so they don't have uh, any restaurants, but they have, uh, you know, anything like cheese shops, uh, ceramic uh, glasses, and you can order deliveries as well. And one last thing you need to know, and then I'll pass it on to someone else, is that uh, we also open the possibility for uh, shops, either restaurants or all stores, uh, to have a, a click and collect option um, so that it's available to them if they are partners of the local co-op. And um, yeah, one last thing that I, I want to say is that uh, we don't deal with pricing. Every co-op is independent on uh, how they want to deal and how they want to contractualize with their partners. So we, we just provide the technology and we advise as well because we don't want people to make bad choices in, in terms of economics uh, or business model and everything. But uh, we provide the technology, but they like the co-ops really remain uh, independent on how they want to run it. And I uh, think I'm done with it. If there are any questions. Thanks, Adrian. I think I'm gonna ask all the speakers to go first and then we'll have a Q&A at the, at the end. That's okay. Um, there are, you're welcome to start responding in the chat, but I'll, I'll, I'll pick up the questions anyway so everyone can hear. Thank you very much. Um, I've, I will let the speakers go slightly over time because I think all the content is so important. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, we'll try, I'll try and keep a balance between <laughs> allowing that. Um, now it'd be great to hear from, from York Collective. So this is a collective based in York, who are set up as a career cop. So it'd be nice to hear your experience. I think it's Matt, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you hear me? Yeah. So well, yeah, I'm Matt from York Collective. There's Alex here and Aaron as well. Alex will be leading one of or in one of the uh, working groups, I believe. Um, so we got in contact with uh, a co-op cycle um, near the beginning, I suppose, three four years ago. Um, and there were four of us, and we'd all been working in food delivery um, at some point. Um, Aaron, I think, has done the most out of all of us. Um, so yeah, we wanted to uh, start something ourselves. We knew all the shortcomings of um, the current food delivery platforms, primarily for the workers, but also for the restaurants involved and I suppose for the customers. Um, and one of our founding principles is that we wanted to start with um, without having to put any of our own money into it. Um, uh, so we started as an unincorporated association, four of us, and started talking to local businesses. 
and we got our first paid work alongside another startup that was yeah um had just begun in, in york um but no longer exists and they were trying to um uh, build a platform around connecting like small kind of eco-friendly jobs um and as part of their trial they asked us to do the delivery side of it so we yeah um agreed some terms and started accruing our first bit of money um working for those guys and we built on built up enough um to be able to afford to incorporate which yeah took a bit of a time um we incorporated at the beginning of this year um our first lot of jobs with that um, platform were at the end of last year but to get in there had to be some changes made to the platform and ongoing like um, backwards and forwards with the development team at Co-op Cycle to make those changes so the platform was suitable for use in the UK. Um, so yeah, after our first bit of paid jobs and um, the incorporation, we also decided to get a membership to a local um, um, business association called Indie York, who are uh, an association of independent businesses in York, which are now about 200 strong. So yeah, about the same time as we started talking to Co-op Cycle, we started talking to them and kind of trying to create awareness about this platform existing and the opportunity it would afford um, um, local businesses to work with, um, work with us. So yeah, a little bit further down the road, um, and uh, at the beginning of the year, we, um, uh, well, actually up till COVID, I suppose, um, yeah, we were really just using the money that we'd accrued from the uh, that um, startup work. And COVID came along and then we got more interest from the um, Indie York members that we've been talking to because then there, would, there was a need for um, a delivery service. And so negotiations happened around that, um, both with the um, scheduled delivery from stores, which Adrian showed you, and also the e-commerce food delivery side. Um, yeah, so since the beginning of COVID, we've been doing um, a large part of it has been food delivery, which we've since stopped, and a consistent, but yeah, uh, yeah, a consistent amount of scheduled deliveries from a selection of small stores. So everything from uh, like a haberdashery through to um, like a Whole Foods shop, um, we do deliveries for, um, and they're on a. Uh, a week, there were a weekly pickup during COVID because of the um, uh, limitations of staff being able to get to the stores. But since then, we've been upping that and we're doing um, near enough de next day delivery for those stores. Um, so, yeah, and alongside the, um, the work that came through because of the pandemic, we were doing a lot of solidarity work at the same time, which we also got through um, connections we built through in New York. Um, so we were doing um, hospital deliveries every day of the week for, I think it turned out to be 12 weeks, um, delivering about 50 meals to the local hospital um, each morning. And then we did some uh, uh, mask deliveries as well, or like face visor deliveries when they start getting printed. Um, yeah, so since then, uh, we have dropped the food tech side of stuff and we're currently rethinking the best way to approach that situation again. Um, now the demand's um, picking up, um, but yeah. And yeah, and taking on more hours with the shops we're working with. Um, so yeah, we work, we're using the platform in the three different ways which Adrian described. We've got the e-commerce, like food delivery, um, shops side of things. Uh, the stores that we work with usually have 
uh, or all have uh, their own login. So they book deliveries directly onto the system and then we invoice them um, on a regular basis. And then we've also got a booking form that um, you're able to put as an iframe in your own, on your own website. So we have people booking through that and even people booking through that store um, to collect food from restaurants which are on other platforms um, but not on our own. Um, yeah, and the, the, with the stores as well, with their own um, option, somebody asked about the WordPress plugin that other slots in there. Yeah, we were working with a store where um, it was integrated with their WordPress website. Um, yeah. Thanks. Bro. Yeah, that's me. Again, everyone, please paste questions in the in the chat. Uh, Matt can respond, um, and we can also have a bit of a Q and A afterwards. Uh, I'm going to pass it on to Mark from Cop Culture, who will tell us a bit more about how to set up a courier cop in the UK. Mike. Hi. So, can you hear me? Okay. Right. So, uh, my name is Mark Simmons. I'm a crop to development business advisor. Uh, and I'm also a member of the Industrial Workers of the World Union, which is how I first uh, came across career co-ops a couple of years ago through their career networks. So I've worked with a few career co-ops uh, and I work with uh, sort of co-ops across sort of uh, lots and lots of different sectors. There's also my colleague Nathan Brown who's worked with careers down in Southampton uh, and there are other crop development advisors on the call. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen with you and I'm just going to give you a whistle-stop tour of the process of uh, setting up a career cop. Coincidentally, it's, it's pretty much the process of setting up uh, any cooperative um, but just nuanced for uh, career co-ops. Um, so uh, typically, th th there's some sort of catalyst at the start of this, and it might be you just having an idea or over a chat in the pub or seeing something in social media. Uh, and at that stage, all you've got is you've got the idea in your head or you've scrolled something on the, uh, the back of the beer mat or the back of an envelope. Um, uh, and that's where you are at the start of it. Um, we advise normally that before you do much else, you actually recruit some other people that are interested in this idea. You can set up a co-op on your own and recruit people later, but it's much, much more difficult. It's much better to involve the people who are potential members of the co-op uh, at an early stage. Uh, and then we would normally advise at that point, you do some research. So before you start engaging with professional business advisors like, Na like Nathan and I, actually find out who's already doing it. And, and you know, actually attending this call would be the sort of thing here. And you've got an advantage as in the career co-op sector is you've already got people like Co-op Cycle that have done a huge amount of work and can signpost you to other people that are already active in the UK and internationally. So who else is already doing this? How can they, because, you know, with any co-op development, you'll find that the people who've already done this, who are further down the road for you, will be quite happy to help you. Um, so an early exploration of what else is going on. And then actually at that point, once you're convinced that actually this is something worth pursuing and you've got a group of people worth pursuing it, then you can start to talk pe to people like uh, Nathan and I in co-op culture and other cooperative development bodies. Um, and we can get often get funded to work with you as well. So at that point, in that sort of early stages, we'd often be helping a group explore exactly why do they want to do this. So it's good where you've got a group of people to have that shared mission. You know, is it about providing sustainable livelihoods? Is it about uh, low energy transport? Is it about both of them? Is it about other things? Okay, uh, so that would often be the early work that we do with the group, but then pretty soon we're getting into some of the stuff that uh, Matt was talking about there. So actually look at the feasibility of it. Will this thing actually fly? Is there a business here that stacks up and is going to actually, actually be able to provide a livelihood for people? Uh, this area here, Matt talked about incorporation. That's probably the, one of the biggest areas we get involved with and the biggest stumbling block for groups. What's the legal vehicle that you're going to create for your cooperative? So what sort of vehicle are you going to have? 
who's going to be on the bus, who gets their hands on the steering wheel, because there are other options around this. We can have multi-stakeholder cooperatives where customers and workers are both involved as well. Although here we're predominantly talking about, uh, and the, the interest so far has been around worker co-ops. And then finally, in this sort of like really exploring the business section, do you actually need some startup capital in here? Um, you've got a real advantage with career cops is that often we're setting up a platform cop. There's a huge amount of uh, capital money needed to do this bit here to create the platform. But actually, you're being offered to a great extent a platform that works off the shelf. So you're not having to find the money to do that. But you might have to. So, so for instance, if you were setting up an, uh, an electric cargo bike career co-op, you might need the money up front to buy those cargo bikes. Um, so all the answers to all these questions will then help us choose the legal structure. And hopefully at the end of working with someone like Nathan or I, uh, you would have a business plan as well. So if you do need to go to a bank or investors in order to get the money, you've actually got something to show them. And also you've got, the, you've got a plan for yourself that you can show to new members, et cetera. And then just a little bit more detail on that legal structure thing, which is the, often the thing we most have been involved with so far. That, that question that I talked about, who is involved? Is it just workers? Is it customers? Are there investors who are going to get their hands on the steering wheel? And also this key question here, are the workers going to be employed or self-employed? Do we want to preserve that sort of advantage of the gig economy from the workers' point of view, that you've got that total flexibility balanced against what we're seeing um, in, the, in the current gig economy in that sort of total exploitation as the flip side of it? Or do we want to preserve that benefit of flexibility into the cooperative and keep that self-employed status? And you can do both of those. Uh, and then typically your worker co-op, so worker co-op is basically how you organize yourself once you're on the bus. But in the UK, and it will be different in different countries, there are a whole do load of different legal forms that you can use to uh, to create your co-op. Typically in the UK, we'd either be looking at a company limited by guarantee or a cooperative society, but there are others. So if you want to do different things, there are other options there. But again, that's the sort of stuff you'd explore uh, with people like Nathan and I. Um, and as Matt's already said, uh, you know, they've gone through this process and now they're actually already going back through and changing things as well. So typically, apart from this sort of early start stuff, you'll be going through this process again and again through the lifestyle of the, of the organization, tweaking it, possibly even changing your legal structure down the line because these things are all flexible. So it, it's an organic, it's a flexible process and there's lots of people there to help you and uh, Nathan and I were happy to explore those further either in the workshops or after this as well and I've, I've put my contact details on the Google Doc so that's me uh, I will actually also share uh, a link to this uh, Miro whiteboard here as well um, download it while you can because I, I can't guarantee it's going to be there for a huge amount of time so that's that's my bit thanks uh, Nathan, do you, do you want to add anything or do you want to maybe just respond to that question about what is a cooperative <laughs> that's been asked in the chat so everyone can hear? Uh, yeah, I, th I think given the time, Mark covered it very well, the, the whole process. But yeah, yeah, what is a cooperative? It's a democratically controlled enterprise which exists to meet the needs of its members. And if we're going to talk couriers, then it's going to be owned and democratically controlled by the couriers who work within it. And its whole purpose is to meet the needs of those couriers. Uh, if you want to fully understand the, the cooperative model, you could do worse than going and having a look at the Cooperative UK website where you can read far more detailed explanations and get yourself genned up on the seven cooperative principles and the cooperative values which underpin them. Thanks, Nathan. Uh, before we go into the Q&A, uh, Petra, would you be happy to just say what kind of support Cooperatives UK offers for, for people wanting to set up a, a co-op? Would you be happy to do that? Uh, yes, certainly. Um, so I'm Petra Morris. I work for Cooperatives UK along with Vika. Um, one of the support programmes we have running at the moment is called the High Business Support Programme. It's a partnership programme with the Cooperative Bank. It's been running for about five years. Um, and we can provide technical advice and support to anyone that's setting up a cooperative, including courier co-ops. 
Um, we have a network of what we call high providers that all give their expertise, of which um, Mark and Nathan on, on the call today are, are some of those um, advisors. It's a competitive application process. Um, it's open all the time um, and we review them regularly and we can obviously offer um, a few days of advice, particularly helping you towards thinking about which legal form and how to incorporate. Um, I hope that's, that's helpful. Okay, thank you very much. So thanks everyone for posting questions in the, in the chat. That means we can get through a lot of them uh, quicker. I do want to give like 10 more minutes to, to, to questions. So if you, if you want to either, you know, just paste your name in the uh, chat, if you've got a, a question um, and I'll, 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 and if you can say who the question's for as well. Um, so yeah. If you've got a question, please just say it in the chat. It can be for any of the speakers. No questions? Okay, then I think, oh. Um, Okay, you get to group break out, join the breakout groups. Uh, Matt, there's a question for you. If I understand you correctly, you mean that the cost of setting up a cooperative society is more expensive than a private company limited by guarantee. Does that include the costs of lawyers, advisors, et cetera? So Matt, you can answer and probably also someone from Carb Cycle if you want to. Yeah, um, so yeah, I'll, as I mentioned in the chat, um, so now, uh, setting up a company limited by guarantee is 12 quid if you do it online. Um, whereas the cooperative society, because you need um, uh, a sponsoring body and there's model rules involved, which have been you know, pre-authorized, and yeah, there's more expense involved doing, taking that route. Um, there's also a little bit fle of less flexibility with the cooperative societies as far as um, consensus decision making goes. There has to be a fallback onto a majority vote, as far as I'm aware, within the um, you know, cooperative society um, founding act. I can't remember what that is now. Uh, do Nathan or Mark, do you want to comment on that as well? Um, yeah, uh, so uh, there is a slight difference in cost, but it's not huge. You know, it'd be, it'd be the difference between sort of 40 quid and a couple of hundred quid between a company and a society. Um, also, my experience uh, where I, I'm working with a lot of cops uh, that are implementing sociocracy, where they want consent-based decision-making uh, and it, it's easy to implement with either a company or a uh, society structure. There's, there's no real constraint there. Check. Thanks. Um, I have Jim next. Uh, if, if you did paste your question uh, before I started the open the Q&A now and you feel it hasn't been responded enough in the chat, uh, can you paste it again and we'll bring it up again. Uh, but Jim was next. Well, I, don't, I don't know if this was your question, Jim, but uh, we already have um, people delivering books or using bikes or, and or cargo bikes. Uh, so I guess uh, Koya Cooperative is the tool and what you transport is uh, up to you and uh, how you find clients and on what in what field. Great, thanks. Sorry, I'd missed, he had pasted the question in the chat. Uh, Debbie asked, does the software allow traders to have their own online shop and customer orders then link back to the co-op platform? I guess this is uh, also the question about integrating with other platforms. That's yeah, well, I already answered a little, um, a little before. Uh, the, the idea is to have um, APIs for every uh, type of uh, e-commerce uh, websites um, so I don't know which I think 
I think I said something wrong because the, the one I was thinking about that we don't have is the Shopify uh, plugin, but the WooCommerce one we have. So to the to Debbie's questions, uh, that would uh, my answer would be it depends on what the uh, business is using for his own uh, e-commerce website. But everything is doable. It's just time that's missing. I think Press the Shop is working as well. Yeah, Press the Shop. To also respond to Stephanie's question, is the sol solidaristic career culture key to the Co-op Glue, making this more than a new Uber? How do you safeguard grow this culture? And I'll ask also your collective maybe to comment on that. Yeah, it's an interesting question. And uh, uh, because we don't ask, uh, ask this uh, ourselves too much because I guess we're a very young organization. So it's still very political. And uh, the whole idea of this federation was to fight against, some, against something. But, and uh, there's a but I think, and it happens in most, uh, uh, most sectors, is uh, usually, you know, at, at, the, at the beginning of this, uh, in France at least, uh, the uh, Cup Cycles initiative was really close to uh, people organizing the couriers as what was going to be a union uh, after that. And um, we see that paths are trying to, uh, are starting to not divide, but go uh, elsewhere. And uh, I think it's one, uh, one issue we need to address is uh, how do we keep in contact with the rest of the courier world? Because even if we build a courier co-op in every city in the UK or in France, uh, we might be able to, you know, if we're if we're good, we might be able to have a maybe in the end 20, 25, 30 couriers per city. And uh, I'm talking about my city, there's 300 delivery uh, or Uber Eats riders. And at some point, I think it's in the interest of everybody that uh, Cub Cycles remains interested in, uh, you know, fighting for uh, the, the working conditions of every courier, uh, courier uh, and not only its members. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's something that's not there yet, but I think we will have to talk about this at some point. I don't know what's the feeling of, uh, in your collective. Thanks. Does Matt or someone else from the collectives also welcome to answer the question? Alex? Okay. Um, um, yes, I agree. Yeah, there is the um, like some solidarity within uh, courier culture. Um, but at the same time, the way the platforms function, um, does also um, the current platforms such as um, delivery we sort of thing just create some divide between riders because it's almost a competition based uh, um, uh, environment like riders against riders trying to get jobs trying to get in the right areas sort of thing so yeah um, yeah it's like cop cycle offers something far more equitable and like yeah those platforms, the other platforms um, offer for the rider for work. I'm just going to ask uh, if Nathan or, or Mark want to come in on the relationship with the trade unions and then I'll take just one more question about um, mapping the roads and then we'll go to breakout groups otherwise we won't have time. So I don't know if uh, Nathan or Mark you want to comment on, on working with the unions? Or? Um, I'll, I'll take this one. Uh, both, both Mark and I are actually members of the IWW ourselves and, and my my involvement with the local group to try and provoke some career co-op action has resulted in me being more active in my union. Um, but generally the IWW has been very supportive of the idea of career co-ops and the career network uh, has been provided with a lot of information. Um, and, and in actual fact, because the, the IWW, you know, believes in worker control uh, perhaps far more than the sort of mainstream TUC unions there's less resistance to the idea of the workers joining a co-op than you would find in traditional unions I don't know if Mark wants to add to that 
uh, only to say that there is real interest uh, at the moment in developing in working with the unions to develop cuts and, and last week there was the launch of a union co-op manifesto as well actually looking as uh, as unions as catalysts for this sort of activity check Adrian do you want to answer the question about if there's anything uh, uh, I think it was Michael are there any tools in the app for careers to draw save plot out maps of which roads are great for cyclists uh, a way to label roads in regards to the general safety? No, not really. Um, probably because uh, we don't have the kind of uh, problems you have in an American city, uh, but it might be something that would be interesting to draw in, in the future. There's so many things that would be interesting, <laughs> interesting uh, you know. Um, and I'm, I just see Tanya's question, what extra things do you offer compared to others? Um, just to be clear, uh, we don't run uh, the co-ops. I mean, I'm talking co-op cycle. Uh, we don't run the co-ops, we help them. Uh, we're, uh, we are the property, in, in a way, of the co-ops who collectively own the Federation. Uh, we don't uh, we, we can give guidelines if we think uh, there should be things that should be done in the course, but it's really important for, um, for us uh, to keep every co-op um, relatively independent uh, in, in what they do. So I guess, uh, you know, in every human experience, there's good and bad, and there's probably experiences in cop cycle in which Couriers, uh, it's not maybe uh, so uh, democratic as we would wish it would be. And uh, in others, uh, you know, everything might be uh, almost perfect. Uh, but, um, you know, our role is to give guidelines. And even for that question, um, uh, Mark talked about, uh, do you want to be employed or self-employed? Well, uh, uh, the idea of Cub Cycle at first was, we have two requirements to get in the federation. You need to be a co-op and you need to employ people because we want people to be, um, to have, you know, uh, social security if they have an accident and they have, you know, benefits coming in and everything. And um, the reality has come to us where uh, uh, co-ops come and say, well, you know, this thing you were saying that was, sh that was pretty bad. Uh, the flexibility and the self-employed thing. Well, it happens that in our collective, some would not want to be employees. How do we deal with it? And uh, so at the moment, I'm not going to lie to you, we're in between two times where we have to decide what the Federation allows because it used to be a requirement. And I know that for a fact that uh, your collective is wondering, uh, as one example, uh, do we want to be employees? Do we want to be self-employed? And it's the same in every co or in most co-ops. So, so yeah, I guess you know we give guidelines, and uh, we are a fluctuant organization, and we are going to look like what our members make of us. Um, I'm not sure if we still have the same groups, but I'll go through what we have on the sheet um, and tell me if that group doesn't exist. I'm just going to ask you to really briefly, one of you, one person per group, just give us a bit of a feedback on, on how the, um, the conversation went. Um, if you still have questions or if there were questions that came out uh, that need to go, we need to go more in depth, can you paste them in the chat and then we're going to save a copy of the chat and we'll make sure that we address them uh, either in a blog post or via email. Um, so, uh, Mark, do you want to go first with your group, which I think was UK1? Bear with me. Uh, yeah, my group in the end ended up being Manchester. Okay. Uh, which, which I'm quite happy to talk about. So I ended up talking to a small group that are actually in the process of setting up uh, a, a worker cooperative in the area of Manchester known as Chalton, which I know quite well and have worked with other cops in that area. So we were able to have um, quite a useful chat. 
Um, unfortunately, and in that chat, we decided that someone else was going to feedback as well. So I'm, I'm poorly prepared for that. So I think that was Abby who was going to do that. So can I invite Abby to uh, feedback? Uh, yes. Oh, I've just lost my. Um... Oh no, I've just lost my notes. Okay, here we go. Right. Can can everyone hear me? Great, thank you. Uh, so we just talked about the fact that obviously we're working together already and we gave Mark a little bit of background about the area, though he knew it. I think the, the things for feeding back that perhaps are most interesting to others was Mark was talking about the possibility, well, we're a small sort of core group, there's six of us, and we're working with some other people and between us doing the delivery. So the core group plus the others, and we talked a little bit about recruiting new people in, possibly existing couriers, um, and a sort of enabling people to do some work with us at the same time as their uh, maybe delivery or whatever other courier work so that they're you know for, in terms of their their money coming in because none of us are dependent on on this at the moment for our income so we talked about that and we talked a little bit about the networks and how we might uh, start making contact with those existing couriers um through that and then at the end we started talking about the concept of minimal viable products and this sort of um what we might need to do to get ourselves or what what to think about what the minimal we might do to get ourselves started so we're not looking to be all singing all dancing i think this is what it means we're not looking to be all singing all dancing we're looking to think about the stages that we need to take to get ourselves towards that what we might we need to do at this point to to liaise with people, to, to get some of the learning which we can apply as we go on, um, to it, to recruit new businesses to work with us, uh, to engage with the early adopters, that sort of thing. I think that I think that pretty much covers it. Thanks. Um, next group, I'll, I think maybe we focus on the uh, hyperlocal, so London and Brighton. Uh, just to say that we need to really be super punctual in ending this call. Uh, so if, if we can keep it quite brief, we still have 10 minutes, so you don't have to rush it. But if I, if I stop you, uh, that's the reason. Uh, so London and Brighton, who would like to report back? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to report back for London and Brighton. Yep. Great. Yep. So again, we had uh, about four or five of us in the group, largely Brighton, but with one London contingent. Um, mainly people who are working or have been working in cycle couriering, cargo bike couriering, um, and one person working more delivering food provisions, um, but all at various stages in the journey of kind of not wanting to work within the delivery or the more standard sector and looking to set up their own groups and further or less far along in the journey of doing that. Uh, and two real key questions that came out of it really very um, a lot of interest in cycle co-op and the platform that they have and how um, that they can be worked with a lot of interest and uh, happiness I suppose that cycle co-op are keen to share their platform and help support people so we felt that part of the presentation really helpful and then we started focusing more on the co-op structures and set up one of the members of the group who was in the process of setting up a CIC limited by guarantee and we started to get into the detail of how that can still be a cooperative whether it was just the couriers who were members of the cooperative um, but one person who was interested in a wider multi-stakeholder group with kind of people receiving provisions people providing restaurants food providers that kind of thing so yeah we started focusing more on that towards the end um, which I think covers it all could I just add to that? Sorry, this is Sean, and I was facilitating that group. So, uh, we, as, as John said, we just started into some of the questions around the sort of legal and formal sides of the co-op, and I'll be happy to follow up on that with anybody from the group. I put my email address and number into the Google Doc, and I've put and I've made a sort of provision. So, if you want to go into the Google Doc and put your contact details down, or pick up my email address and just email me, I'll be happy to follow up on. Uh, some of the questions that we just started to articulate in our group. Thanks, Sean, for that. Thanks a lot, and John. Um, okay, let's go international now. There was an international group. Who wants the feedback from that? 
Uh, that's me. So um, we we were lucky to have Adrian with us, and we were we were quite a quite an international group. Uh, there was consensus really around the question of viability. Uh, so Adrian covered a few things there in terms of, first of all, in terms of numbers, and he reckoned that, you know, there were lots of examples of co-ops with 17, 20, 25 people, so that was fine, that was manageable in terms of being viable. But there was probably more questions then around um, volume and uh, making it viable in terms of volume, because not only are you paying your courier, you're paying your person behind the screen, the dispatcher, and you're paying maybe somebody on call as well. So getting those on-call policies right in terms of payments and how you might structure that, you know, how much are they getting if they're at home? How much are they getting if they get called out? Um, and so the pricing, um, he reckoned you could, you, you, could, you could make it work. You could make it cheaper than delivery, but, you know, you'd have to have your volume, um, your, your volume right. Um, he gave the example from Grenoble of how they divided uh, the city into zones so that, um, you know, you could, or you could have so many orders per hour and you're getting paid, um, you know, say four orders per hour per courier, getting paid so much. Um, and if, if, if you have your pricing right, that you will be able to pay your courier, you'll be able to pay your standby and you'll be able to pay your dispatch. Um, so, you know, obviously some thought and, and consideration and um, ideas in there. Um, the good news was that you, you, you don't need much capital for setting up. You need your health, you need your bike, which isn't necessarily that expensive. Um, the software capital uh, does need to be contributed to, but my understanding is it doesn't have to be immediately. So, you know, the, the pressure might be off there. Um, and then uh, getting away from viability, he just made an interesting comment then about whether it's a kind of a worker cooperative, which is looking after couriers, or whether it's a multi-stakeholder. And he, he, he just pointed out that um, in a multi-stakeholder scenario, it could be kind of a territorially based, whereby you have um, couriers, you have restaurateurs, and you have maybe the local council who might have an interest in um, tackling something in their particular area. So um, he answered the question, has it been met with resistance? Um, by saying no, but that it can be difficult to convince the restaurants um, to become partners. So you have to overcome that. So um, thanks to Adrian, and he, he, he might correct anything I said that was incorrect. Uh, thanks, Brid uh, Bridget. That was great. I saw that you were reading some notes. It would be amazing if even in bullet points you were able to put that in the, in the Google Doc, um, because it was a lot of really valuable information. Um, if you don't mind, but if you don't have time, I can take it down from uh, by listening to the recording. Um, let's go to Mexico, if we've got the Mexico group here. Hi, uh, yeah, I can talk. Um, it was, well, it was more uh, a back and forth of Q&A uh, between how we set up, how uh, about the software and forming the co-op. Um, it was just mostly that, a lot of Q&A until we got uh, <laughs> removed. It was, uh, it was quite a few people though, I think like four or five. Great. And uh, for anyone uh, listening in from, from other countries, um, I mentioned this in the international group as well, there is, uh, if you go to platform.coop, there's an international course being run by the New School uh, and Mondragon on how to set up a platform co-op and it's very likely that it will start, uh, there will be a new version of it in October. Um, if you subscribe to our newsletter, I'll put details in this in the email we'll send you later, um, you will get notified when that happens. Um, you're obviously welcome to join from the UK as well. Um, so we've got two, two more groups, I think. Uh, should we go with UK uh, one? Or is it, or I know there's one with Nathan, facilitated by Nathan. I don't know if there was another one. Uh, we were UK too, shall I speak? Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, I asked for a volunteer at the start and no, nobody offered, so I'll feed back. Um, really interesting group. We had uh, one individual from Edinburgh, one from Glasgow, and one from an existing co-op in, in Derbyshire, all of them interested in, in establishing either a courier service or a new courier co-op. Um, we had Aaron from New York Collective giving his experience, and then we also had Stephen Gill, whose who's software company, which is converting to a co-op, actually helped design uh, the Co-op Eats ordering service for Scott Mid. And one of the big problems we, we were looking at is, you know, how do you start, how do you get enough people, that critical mass of people to become a co-op, you know, because if you start with one, then you, you can have psychological ownership problems and difficult to convince people to come on board. And, and the lovely thing is we actually had a solution generated in the call, which was, you know, Scott Mid have actually got an ordering service. Um, 
there might be a way of marrying up a career co-op in Glasgow or in Edinburgh to actually deliver their orders. And obviously Stephen's in a position to put the people in Edinburgh and the people in Glasgow in touch with the people at Scott Mid to start discussing this. And the whole business of how do I attract enough of my career co-op, um, my, sorry, my career mates to join this co-op idea. Well, you say we've got a customer already and it's Scott Mid and there's a significant load of business there. So I feel that, that our group really set up a, a lovely brokerage there. We, we did also um, have a bit of a chat. Somebody flagged up the whole thing about community interest company. And obviously I was able to uh, outline that, that Cooperatives UK has developed a cooperative kick form. So that was something which came up that was available. But um, yeah, I, th I feel that really the, you know, the fact that we had uh, somebody from the supply end of things who was looking for co-ops or, or at least to introduce the the uh, supply into co-ops and and people who are looking to start co-ops but need something which gives them that critical mass that minimum viable product i, I feel that our group really really came up with a bit of a result there so Pretty that's nice. us i don't know if anyone else wants to add to that from our group so i've seen um stephen jill's put his contacts in in the google doc so if you want to follow that up after after this call you, um, are you happy for them to get in touch with you yeah. Okay. Was there one more group or, or not, Leila? Petro. Okay. Please go ahead, Petro. Um, yeah, I've got about two seconds left, I think. <laughs> yeah, but I think we can. So I was a bit late coming to our group, but I, I think we were coming from a slightly different angle in our group. And, and Sally, do jump in if I get this wrong. Um, but it seemed to me that we had some existing cooperatives. Um, we had Central England Co-op in in the group, and also. Um, Sally, who works in um, you know, operates in Derbyshire Peak District and also a village in Tewkesbury, who had existing co-op shops, and, and because of the current situation, we're doing deliveries, um, community response type work. So there seemed to be the potential to kind of match up that need of having to have deliveries and online, and, and how we could match that with couriers. So I thought that was really interesting, um, and, and the potential around that, and, and obviously, you know, the fact that hopefully we would rather work with cooperative couriers than, than delivery as, as existing business co-op businesses. Um, but yeah, it's Sally or, or Matt, if you want to jump in on that, because I came late to the session. No, I was there about the same time as you. So uh, yeah, we had a quick discussion about um, uh, volunteer um, work that some people are doing and like a commercial aspect that could come out of that. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I, I was explaining this is really come out of COVID response is um, every um, village in the valley has set up a way of getting food to um, isolated people and we're looking at how we can make that a longer term thing by setting up a um, it's going to be a community benefit society delivering food from local shops so we're supporting the local shops and delivering to local people and using electric vehicles that would be carbon neutral. Great, thank you everyone. Have I missed any groups? I think, no, I think they're there. I'm just gonna put, um, paste uh, the Google Doc again so everyone can see if any of you have energy or time to add um, any notes from or questions that came out of your uh, sessions. Let me just add it. Okay, so this is the, the Google Doc where if, if you have energy to just put in the questions that came out in, the, in, the, in your sessions, uh, if you can remember any of the answers, but it will be really useful for us to know what the questions were so we can put together a, a Q&A and publish that in a, in a blog post and, and send you a, a link to it. Um, um, so yeah, so thank you everyone uh, for your contribution. Uh, we'll be also sending a survey to have feedback from you uh, about this session. So we would really appreciate if you could uh, fill it in so we know how we can improve uh, our webinars. Uh, but other than that, thank you to all the speakers um, and for everyone who participated and for Leila for taking care of all the complicated breakout rooms. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. And we'll, we've recorded this, so we'll put this online if you want to share it with anyone. Okay, bye. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye.